Hi friends, welcome back to Storytime. I'm Sarah Coulter from the Courier Museum of Art. Today we are reading Show Way by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by Hudson Talbot. It's a story that shows how quilts with secret messages became maps to freedom for enslaved people in the 1800s and it follows how each generation has passed along the belief that there is always a road to a better place. Let's get reading. Show Way by Jacqueline Woodson, illustrated by Hudson Talbot. When Suni's great-grandma was seven, she was sold from the Virginia land to a plantation in South Carolina without her ma or pa, but with some muslin her ma had given her, and two needles she got from the big house, and thread dyed bright red with berries from the choke cherry tree. In South Carolina, Big Mama raised Suni's great-grandma, raised most of the slave children on that large patch of land. At night, Big Mama told the children stories, stories she'd tell in a whisper about, children growing up and getting themselves free, and the children leaned in and listened real hard. And in the daytime, when there was some few minutes for a slave to rest a bit, Big Mama taught Suni's great-grandma to sew, colored thread into stars and moons and roads, that slave children grew up and followed late in the night, a piece of quilt and the true moon leading them. See them following the quilt? Years passed, Big Mama moved on to the next world, and Suni's great-grandma grew up, jumped room with a young ma man named Ensler had herself a baby girl and named that child Mathis May. Loved that baby up so. Yes, she loved that baby up. And one day Mathis May would be Suni's grandma, but not for a long, long time yet. In the meantime, she learned to sew. Beautiful girl child learned to sew. When Mathis May was seven, she got sold away. Took a star from her mama's blanket, took a little piece of the road Press it to her face when she wanted to remember back home. Held it to her heart to feel back home, got herself a piece of muslin and some thread somewhere, and kept up her sewing. Sewed so fine, she was making clothes for everyone in the big house and slaves too. And at night, she sewed stars and moons and roads, tiny patch pieces of stars and moons and roads. Slaves whispered, but no one was allowed to say that Mathis know how to make. So all the different patterns represent different places. North Star, Log Cabin. A show way. Came to her when they needed to talk. Came to her for the stories of brave people. Came to her for the patch pieces just before they disappeared into the night. There she is with her quilt. But Mathis May stayed on, grew tall and straight boned, jumped broom with another slave. That slave was killed, running off to the north side of the war, months before he got to meet his baby, a girl child who was born free that same year, 1863. History went and lost her name. Years later, Suni came. Suni's mama held her up in the moonlit night, showed her the stars, the moon, whispered into her ear, there's a road, girl, there's a road. Love that Suni up so. Yes, you love that Suni up. There's Suni. Suni and her mama stayed on the land they'd always known, picking cotton for a little pay and a piece of that ground to farm called that land home. Stayed on with other people, none of them slaves anymore. Hard work, making a life from pink day to blue black night, but it was a free life just the same. And when the day was finally over, wasn't hard to find a thing or two to smile about. There she is. At night, they cut and sewed strange lines and odd designs. People said about Suni, that child could find some beauty in so many things.
When Suni was seven, she was tall and straight boned like her mama, took and washed with her mama, sewed stars on patch pieces, sewed stars and moons and roads, sewed fields and rivers and trees, patched the pieces together for her mama to sell come market day, called those quilts Trail to the North, called the quilts Show Way. Didn't much need that secret trail to the North anymore, but started living well off the money those quilts brought in. Sewed those quilts to live, sewed those quilts to remember, and though some could book read, most could not. Stars and moon and roads, picture reading was what they'd always known. Some morning, Suni looked out over the fields of cotton and dreamed of a place to call her own. Married a man named Walter Scott, who owned a bit of land in Anderson, South Carolina. Had herself a baby girl, named that girl child Georgiana. Love that baby up, so. Yes, they love that baby up. It's her whole story. Georgiana, who grew tall and straight boned and free, picking out words from her mama's Bible by three. Reading by oil lamp light at age five, people say about Georgiana, she always had a book in her hand. Grew up to teach in a small school in Anderson. Had herself two girls at once, named them Caroline and Anne. Love those babies up so. Yes, they love those babies up. And Caroline and Anne grew up tall and straight boned, turned seven, walking in a line to change the laws that kept black people and white people living separate. There they are. They were a little bit scared sometimes, but pinned inside their dresses were show away patches Grandma Suni had given them. And something about those patches made scared hang his mean old head and walk away see their patches. Anne grew up writing poems and sometimes she made the poems into songs. Caroline stitched those songs into art that people bought to hang up on their walls. Anne had me and mama loved this baby up so. Yes, she loved this baby up. And when I was seven, I didn't have to work in a field or walk in any freedom lines but I still read like Georgiana and wrote like Anne. And when the words were slowing to come, I sewed stars and moons and roads into quilts and curtains and clothes because mama said, all the stuff that happened before you were born is your own kind of show way. There's a road girl, mama said. There's a road. All leads up to now. And I grew up tall and straight boned writing every day, and the words became books that told the stories of many people's show ways. Had a baby and named that child Toshi Georgiana. Love the Toshi up so. Yes, I love that Toshi up. So some mornings I start all over, holding tight to little Toshi. I whisper a story that came before her. Now, Suni was your great-great-grandma, and when Suni's great-grandma was seven, Thanks all for joining me today. The Courier will be reopening its doors in just a few days, and we get to open with a new temporary exhibition by Richard Haynes called Whispering Quilts. He uses the same historic quilting patterns that were wayfinding signals, as we saw in Show Way. He also combines them with his own personal experiences. His art is inspiring and powerful, and our friend Lauren is now going to show us an art making activity inspired by Richard's own work. Thank you for the story, Sarah. It was great. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren, and I'm here to show you how to make your very own oil pastel drawing in the style of Richard Haynes. He's been a friend of the museum for a long time. He uses lines, shapes, and bold colors to create his beautiful pieces. Make sure to come to the museum to check him out and follow along with me while we make our very own oil pastel drawing.